India is the only one that publicly banned 100 apps from China in India. Okay, TikTok being one of them. India is, I think, taking 25% of Apple's uh, iPhone being made over there. Tim Cook decided to move 25% over there. I want to say it's 25% or it's going to be 25%, but they're mo moving a lot of the uh, manufacturing over to India. Starnu produced the best engineers. I've been doing this for a while with their school, IIT Institute, which some people Great. say schools, MIT Institute. Great. I've been there. It's an incredible, yeah, it's incredible setup that they have. It's, it's on a whole different level. People keep hiring Indian engineers yeah. and they're fantastic yes. on what they're doing. Yes. The reputation that they've had over the years on business is gradually changing 30 years ago 40 years ago 20 years ago yes. 10 years ago it's changing yes. where trust is going higher around the world Modi is a pro capitalism you know supporter you know uh, on what he's done obviously he's not a perfect leader he's got his own flaws like everybody else does but he's he's done some great work in a country with 44 different political parties I don't know what the number is but I think it's 44 give or take political parties he's done a good job on bringing them to where they're at right now what do you think is what do you think of China what do you think of India, how important of a role India is to keeping the world not relying on 100% of China, where China can impose themselves on everybody else. And I, the only reason brought up India and China is because you worked in those. Yes, I worked on India. I did not, did not work on China, but obviously I, I, I watch it. I think we we have to deal with both. I'm, and I'm a believer in typically an engagement, not because I think it's soft, but because I think if you don't want to use military power and you say you don't want to talk to somebody, where do you end up? Like I would say, you got to engage with the Iranians. You have to do it because the alternative is say we walk over away from the table and we have no cap capability to influence the outcome. Well, you like Iran, you want to support the government. That's not what I said. I said is here's you got a few options. So I look at China, which we can talk about in a moment, and I say I think engagement and also understanding of what the trajectory is in the 21st century. Realistically, if you look at population growth, economic growth, ability to plan decades in advance, ability to overlook when you're when you're China and looking at African elsewhere. They don't care about human rights. We're just going to invest. We don't do that in this country in America. I, I think we have to figure out a way to deal with China because if you want to say we're going to compete with them over Taiwan in 2035, I'm going to say, okay, let's, let's, let's play that game. I want to see it gamed on paper how we're going to do that. And I want to make sure that you know the American people are going to support going across the Pacific to do that. So China's a different case, obviously, in India. I think I completely agree on India. When I used to work on India, in terms of um, economic regulations, in terms of global engagement, in terms of politics and diplomacy, I thought huge country, huge potential, as you say, educational capabilities at the upper 1%. Young, 28 in, years incredible, old, average age. Yeah. Incredible uh, uh, intellectual talent, investment also in hard stuff like engineering and mm -hmm. the sciences. I think engagement economically makes sense. Politically, in terms of things like countering China, I look at the attitude of India on issues like um, populism and human rights in the country, religious diversity, I'd be cautious. Um, I would be cautious about getting too close in terms of seeing them as a natural partner because I think Modi- This is who? India. India. I think Modi does not see the world in the way we do in terms of what he sees for the future. That's a Hindu country. It's not a multi-ethnic country for him, I think. And that's going to cause, if you look at the history of violence, ethnic and religious violence in India, I would not have high hopes about stability in that country over the long term. Really? I'm not talking about revolution. I'm just talking about stuff the government does where Americans in Congress and elsewhere cringe and say, wow, we don't want to be in bed with those people. That country has a history of... Who, who do you fear more, them or China, long term? China. Okay. I wouldn't say fear. I would say uh, if we think we can confront... Formidable enemies. Yes, that's exactly okay. right. That's right. how... Yeah, that's right. 